So it's another exciting edition of United and Everything Football Podcast. Today is a special one. Uh, we have a rival fan in our midst, a very good friend of ours. Uh, he's been dodging. The last time United played Chelsea, we tried to get him, but he was far away out of the country. But some way, somehow, we've managed to get a very, very special guest with us here today. Fentio Tahiru Fentio, who just told us he has left Chelsea. Oh. <laughs> my guy what's going on Charlie Charlie how be <laughs> Charlie the battle of the shoe for <laughs> <laughs> family you call it the battle of the bastards <laughs> the battle of the bastards guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, we 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 yeah. we won't, we won't. Yeah, it's good to be it's good to be finally here, man. Yes, yes, yes. Great to have. I was you. on for the Afcon, right? Yes, yes. You're on for the Afcon. You're on for the Afcon, but this this is club football, so let's 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 delve straight into it. Kwame, let's go for a quick break. When we come back, we just go into everything here on United and everything football. All right, thank you and welcome back to United and Everything Football. United will be up against Chelsea. Now, Chelsea drew against Burnley at home, a 10-man Burnley. And United also drew against mm. Brentford. Um, Fentio calls it the battle of the Shefo. So to our non ghanaian audience, a Shefo means two very, very bad teams. Uh-huh, that's what he means. Uh, <laughs> well, let me, let me start with you, Fent. Um, Chelsea, what has what has been happening with Paul Bolly and Chelsea? It's been he's about ending his second season as the owner of the club. And do you see the direction with which Bolly is going with the club? Well, um, that's a very interesting question. I think we can all see the direction that he's taking the club. Obviously, the question is whether it's a good direction. <laughs> so, um, and to be fair, I think that the Chelsea project has not shown enough signs at the beginning to convince a lot of people that it's going to work. Now, it's not necessarily an issue of just even the results themselves. I actually do think that the one thing that probably is going for Chelsea is the way that, and this is against contrary opinion, but I really do think that when you look at Chelsea and the way they have played the football that they have played, I think I'm one of the people that actually think that they have been a little bit unlucky to be where they are. Um, and the on. The bad luck that I speak about stems from two things. I think, number one, Chelsea have been very unlucky with injuries. They've had some really bad injuries to very key players um, who are very instrumental to the way Chelsea play. And they bring both experience and good form into this Chelsea squad. And I'm speaking about Reese James, a big, big miss. We've seen Ben Chilwell since his comeback. It's not been the same player. He had been out for... Very, very long spells. Uh, even Cucurella, who only recently returned, was one of those other experienced players that could have helped his squad. We know how much Chelsea has depended, especially on the services of Thiago Silva in the last three or four seasons since he came to Chelsea, leading them to win in the Champions League. He had been a main cog in that defence, providing certain kind of leadership. He's never been available for most part of this season. Even the goalkeeper, fair enough, uh, you know, Sanchez started with this team. He was instrumental in the way Chelsea built from the back, yeah. in the way they played. He had also been out for long spells. He came out only two weeks ago or so. He's not the same player. Yeah. Yes, granted, the kid that has coming is doing well, but it's, he's, it's not the same in terms of the way he contributes to the play. Yeah. And then you look at other very important aspects of, and I've mentioned two things about the back. Like, so one being the injuries that I just mentioned, key players that are instrumental in the way Chelsea play have not been v- available for most parts of the season. The other problem with Chelsea is goal scoring. And this, I believe, you know, managers will always tell you that, you know, they have a big problem when the team cannot even create chances. Yeah. When the team is creating chances and are not scoring, then you know that, 
one part of the problem is sought. And for Chelsea, that is one of their biggest issues. Chelsea are creating a lot of chances. In yeah. fact, Chelsea have created the fourth most chances, big chances in the Premier League. Yeah. And yet they are 14th in the number of those big chances converted. So it just tells you how poor they are. In other words, in terms of expected goals, Chelsea are actually only behind Arsenal in XG. Arsenal's XG per game is 2.3. Chelsea's XG per game is 2.0. Mm -hmm. Level with Liverpool, level with Man City. So if Chelsea were actually converting their chances with the same efficiency with which Man City and Liverpool were converting their chances, we could be speaking about Chelsea being in the top four. So they are creating, they are not scoring. And you've watched Chelsea matches. Mm -hmm. Last weekend was a typical example. 33 shots, 13 of them on target. And yeah, Chelsea couldn't beat 10 man barely who didn't have a manager. That's just how poor Chelsea have been in terms of converting chances. And the one player that has shown a bit of verve and a bit of efficiency in front of goal, he's setting records along the way. And I'm talking called Palmer. Yeah. He's got 13 goals, seven assists. That is the youngest player to have 20 goal contributions in the Premier League in Chelsea's history. And the season hasn't even ended. Yeah. So imagine if other experienced players were contributing and that Nicholas Jackson was actually worth his salt and he was an actual striker. He is not a striker. I, I, I Honestly, like... The Chelsea's number one striker cannot be a bench warmer in the Senegalese national team. How did Chelsea move from uh, having the Cote d'Ivoire captain as their lead striker and uh, uh, Spain's lead striker as their lead striker in Diego Costa to having a bench warmer with the Senegalese national team as uh, their that, lead striker? Sorry, let, let, me, let, so me break in, let me break in with this question. Um with you've delved into your recruitment and a few other things. And I I want to ask the manner and approach used by Todd Bolly in clearing some of the most experienced Chelsea players out of the club. And I mean, it looks as if he's assembled a brand new team because you look at the side and the front line, brand new Raheem Sterling, brand new Nicholas Jackson, Noni Madueke, um, uh, Mudrik. These are all brand new players that haven't been in the team. In fact, over the last season, there are new players that came into the, the, the site. Don't you think that approach has disrupted the flow of the club in terms of the experience that was supposed to be in? Because you talk of Kai Havertz leaving, you talk of Mason Mount being allowed to leave the club. These are players who were chipping in goals for Chelsea, but all these players are no more with the club. Don't you think that's disrupted the flow of things at the club? Absolutely. I think there's no one that can deny that the wholesale changes didn't help the club. Nobody makes absolute wholesale changes to a squad and expect them to do well in their very first season. And I think that is... You know, look, the whole problem is not necessarily bringing in new players. It's bringing in too many new players at the same time. So there is no chemistry. There is no... So it, it's almost as if they're using the full season to not build that kind of chemistry. And it just doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, I think there is proof also that certain players do not need a lot of time to, to really adapt. But there's also proof in the Premier League that so many players need a lot of time to really quickly adapt. And even for Chelsea, for some of the players that even left, there's some, some people that would argue that a player like I have has never truly settled at Chelsea before he left to go to Arsenal. And then you make as many changes as they have done. It obviously is not going to work. Having said that, look, we've seen what a very a working system has done for certain players that have come into the Premier League in their very first season. A good example would be Mohamed Kudus. He mm -hmm. just slotted into that West Ham team like he's been playing with the team for the longest time. And that is because West Ham already have a system with certain players that have enabled him to get in there and, and integrate into the squad quite seamlessly. Chelsea doesn't have that. Yeah. You mentioned Chelsea front line. Raheem Sterling almost looks like the only consistent figure in that Chelsea front line. Apart from Raheem Sterling, Mudrik is new, Majorca is new, Nicolas Jackson is new. Uh, and you look at even the midfield. The, the Chelsea has an entirely new midfield. Enzo Fernandez, 
uh, uh, Moises uh, Caicedo. Moises Caicedo. Even if he's Chuku America, who is an academy player that's coming to, or he's very new players. So all of this from right from even in defense. Okay, when Thiago Silva is not playing, and obviously with Rhys James injured all the time, Kukurela injured all the time, uh, and Ben Chowell injured all the time, the two goalkeepers are even new. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, and you have two centre backs who are playing with each other, maybe for the first time in Chelsea Colours. Okay, you have Disasi trying his best, and then you have. Uh, 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 sometimes you have. Like, it's Achille, almost. You uh, have a lot of. Yeah. Eddie Ashile was out for a long time, came in, looked like a completely new player, didn't look like he knew exactly what he was doing. So I agree that the whole Chelsea changes have not helped Chelsea. However, let's put that into context and look at the way Chelsea has played despite those issues. Now, we've spoken about Chelsea always wasting chances, even when, for example, uh, a Thomas Tuku was in charge of Chelsea. Yeah. We complained about Kai Havertz missing a lot of chances yeah. uh, in the past. So this is a running issue. And Chelsea thought that, in fact, remember when Chelsea signed Romelu Lukaku, everybody thought Chelsea were creating so many chances and everyone thought Chelsea were doing really well without a striker. And the imagination was, imagine what Chelsea would do with an actual goal scorer. He comes and he doesn't solve the problem. Chelsea have found themselves in a very similar situation. Chelsea are creating chances. They're actually playing well. You know, so and the numbers don't lie. Like you look to the numbers and you know that Chelsea are doing something right. And that is for me the reason I don't necessarily always like to blame the coach too much. I do understand that Mauricio Pochettino has his own short uh, shortcomings because Chelsea have blown the lead mm -hmm. a record number of times this season. No other club has given away the lead as much as Chelsea have done this season. Yeah. And yet Chelsea in the way they have played, in the combinations that they have found with each other, they have created massive chances. Yeah. And it's just left with guessing a player or a couple of players that would chip in with as many goals as someone like Cole Palmer. And Chelsea would be good. So I understand that there are challenges at the moment. Mm -hmm. I understand that the whole series uh, changes were not necessarily how the team should have been built. But when you analyze everything in context, Chelsea went to the EFL Cup final. And surely it's a game that they should not have lost. I think we all agree. Chelsea were probably the much better side. And suddenly, now, now when you think about it, if Chelsea won that game, suddenly Chelsea would have been guaranteed European football yeah. this season. Mm -hmm. They would have been going to the Europa League. Mm -hmm. And despite losing that, Chelsea are still in another situation where they could potentially go to the FA Cup final and maybe think about winning it. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of clubs can say that they were in the EFL Cup final or they were in the and then they were in the FA Cup final as well. So in context, it's actually been a decent season. The problem, however, is that they are coming against a Manchester City team in the FA Cup that is going to be very cheeky. Mm -hmm. But again, contextualizing that game, yeah. you know that Chelsea have been excellent against Man City in two games. So okay. anything is really possible for them. Okay. And then on top of that, the problem now is that if that goes out of the way, Chelsea are 17 points away from European <laughs> football. <laughs> it just doesn't look like it is possible if they don't win the FA Cup. Yeah. And if that doesn't happen, and Chelsea don't finish in European places this season, suddenly it's going to be looking like a very, very disappointing season, especially after the amount of money spent. Well, Fentio has gone on a 13 minutes rant on Chelsea. 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost as if Chelsea fans are as... going to come up to me and say, Suck the coach. Suck the coach. You know, he's the problem. Okay. That's, That's a 13 now. minute rant. Kwame, let me hear your rant. It's almost as if you guys forgot I was here. <laughs> I'd rather you guys talk about Chelsea than talk about United right now. So. Kwame. Uh, you, how about you, United? Because I want to hear. <laughs> your problems make me feel happier. Bobby, the injury situations. The injury <laughs> situations never go away. Um, just before we start yeah. recording, um, Lindelof is out. Lissandro Martinez came for just forty-five minutes, and he's gone back to the treatment room. Johnny Evans won't be available. Um, we would have just two senior defenders available in the game against Chelsea. 
that's Rafael Varane. It's a revolving Bruce. door. It's a revolving, it's a revolving door. door. Rafael Varane. We'll just have Harry Maguire and Rafael Varane available for the game. Um, the injury situations never improve, Kwame. Uh, let me hear you. What's your take? Let's delve straight into the game against Chelsea. Then I'll pick it up from Fentu. Fentu has taken all the time. If there was any hope we could rescue the season in terms of um, finishing a, a top four place or top five place, yeah, as they, they say now, I think it's it's gone. Because we've gone back to the same situation that we were before the end of last year. Yeah. I said this 2024 is a new year. I was hoping mm. that in a new year and the way we've started, especially yeah. in the league, we've actually been decent in the league. We've just lost a couple of games and I think we've drawn a couple. But yeah. then we've been decent. But then what's happened is what crippled us before the start of 2024 has read his head again. And mm -hmm. injury situation is untenable now. Yeah. What I think, think, I think, I think it's done. It's done in terms of Champions League football. We're probably just going to finish in the Europa League and we have to Welcome to that. my club. I told you. That's yeah. the Champions I'm finally there now. Yes, I yeah. told you. I'm finally there now. I, I have conceded. Pride flag. I'm <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> but then, against Chelsea, against Chelsea, we yes. have been very good against Chelsea for a very, very long time. Yeah. I think since 2017, we've not lost in the league against them. Since I think we've lost a couple of cup games. A couple yeah. of cup games. But then, yeah. In terms of the league, we've busted five wins out of 11. We've gone the other six. Yeah. Even at Stamford Bridge, which was a venue we did not want to go to some years ago, we don't lose there. The yeah. last four times we've been there, we've won one and I think we've drawn the rest. So it's been, we've had a number on Chelsea. We had the number. It's just, it's just that we, usually United versus Chelsea is a game where both teams are fighting for something. That's the yeah. that's the norm. We've got we've come to, we've gotten used to that for quite a long period of time. So to find out that the last couple of encounters have just been then they are dead rubber games. It's just the battle of the bastards. We're just trying to find out who is the better of the worst two. <laughs> that's just the, it's an issue of pride right now. Yeah. And when pride is at stake, you would still want us to go out there and then win. Our problems from the injury front is not so dissimilar from that of Chelsea. They have a raft of injuries. We have a raft of injuries as well. But the difference is they are playing better than we are playing. But we get, we happen to win more games than they do. I think it's just based off the fact that our manager is into the second season in his like, spell at Manchester United. He's got a grip of sorts of the team. He's able to grind out results as we almost stole the results yes. the last time compared to... Pochettino, who is not loved by Chelsea. I, I, I did not want to talk about Chelsea, but then I want to chip that in. I think he's up against it because he's a former Spurs man mm -hmm. and the, the fans simply have not accepted him. I see everything Fence is talking about. I understand it completely, but I doubt ch most Chelsea fans would want to buy into that, mainly because the man at the helm of affairs is not someone they even accept in the first place. Yeah. So it's very difficult for them to see logic or mm -hmm. that they see. This. See, this guy goes to press conferences and then the next thing he's saying, he's talking about the fans don't get this and the fans don't understand this. And I, I, I laugh at fans when they say this. He's not doing anything to get these fans on his side. Todd Boyley, we've heard, we've seen him pull the plug on money just whenever he comes under any form of pressure. I wouldn't be surprised if Poch is the fourth manager he decides to kick out in two seasons. But then again, I have to talk about my manager too. He's under pressure somewhat <laughs> to deliver results. Second season is not going as well as the first season. First season uh, was, I think he, he did very well. Two but, cup but, finals, but, one but, cup. But, but, I have a question for you. On the injury front, there is this theory mm -hmm. I don't know if we've ever discussed it about the distances that the players have to run to recover. You know, I mean, mm. if you see the distances between the players having to run a lot more, probably causing a lot of the muscle injuries that um, these players are having. Um, Casimero, not noted for a lot of injuries, has suffered mm. a lot of hamstring injuries this season, two or three times already this season. Uh, the Lindelof mm. injury is known to be a muscle injury. Now, 
um, Martinez's new injury. You know, he had some something, something fit, metatarsal that he had to be operated on. And then he went to the knee injury and now he's having... I mean, a lot of people talking about, especially the muscle injuries. We've had 53 separate injuries this season and illnesses. Mm -hmm. Do you think the method of the coach is accounting for these injuries that we are we are experiencing? Absolutely not. I do not buy into that school of thought. What I we, we've had this discussion before, and I've had my theory on how, as to why we are suffering these injuries. Our squad squad has not been good enough for quite some time now, and we've relied on a certain group of players over a period of time to be under this manager to get results, starting mm -hmm. all the way back from last season. Mm -hmm. Casemiro never played as many games as he did last season for Manchester United. A lot of those players were heavily relied on last season, carrying into this season. They've played a lot of football, a lot of minutes. Yeah. If our squad was as good as City's, mind you, the likes of City and Liverpool do experience injuries, yeah. but the quality of their squad allows them to have people who come in with the same outputs you are able to get players to recover properly before they do come back and keep on going. It's it, the best example of City squad rotation. It's almost like 22, 23 players who are of, you know, they are dependable enough. With our squad, you take away our starting 11 and you look at what we have in reserve. Our manager does not turn to them on a regular basis. Last season, if he had the opportunity to play a first 11 for all the, was it 54 or 60 something matches that we played, he would have done so. The yeah. only time he chopped and changed was when players did pick up injuries and he got players off the bench to come and replace those players in most games. Mm -hmm. Besides that, it was almost always the best possible 11 in all competitions. Mm -hmm. Oh, we played almost every game possible last season in every single competition. Mm -hmm. But the Europa League semi-final and final, we played every po possible game in the FA Cup, every possible game in the League Cup, every possible league game, except for three games in the Europa League. And even the Europa League, we had to go through a second round qualification period against Barcelona. Extra games. I just feel like it's a carry forward from that season into this season. And we are suffering the replications of it. If we mm -hmm. hadn't even signed Johnny Evans, if we hadn't signed Johnny Evans, imagine what would have happened. Yeah. So I don't buy into this, the stances. See, tacticals are always looking for theories. You know our opinion on tacticals right now. They go on current trends and then try and sell something to us that's happening now. And in a year's time, we could, we could be having a totally different conversation about the same thing that he spoke about. Don't buy into that theory. I don't buy into it either. Don't, don't do anyway, this. Don't. Anyway, anyway. Fans, let's look at the game. You guys have failed to beat us in the league since 2017. Come again. I can barely Good hear train. you. You know, it's a good train. <laughs> but let's let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. I mean, what's what's we have just about eight minutes to go. Um, let's quickly look at the game. Since 2017, why? Why have you guys failed to beat us? What is the problem? I don't know, man. I, I don't know, man. Uh, if the last 17 times the two teams have met, Chelsea have only one victory. Can you imagine? That is in all competitions. Oh, and that one victory. That was the was FA Cup semi final. Exactly. So that's that's pretty much it. Even uh, Stanford Bridge, like uh, you know, you said earlier, Chelsea don't do too well. Uh, I think, you know, I've just got a message for the Chelsea fans even before I talk about the game. And you are spot on when you say that. The, the the perspective I've gone with will be very unpopular with a lot of Chelsea fans, and that is true. But the Chelsea fans are the same ones that will look to Mikel Arteta and praise him for what he's doing. But Mikel Arteta's first season when he came into uh, Arsenal, he finished eighth. Okay, do you think Chelsea can finish eighth? I think Chelsea will finish above eighth. In his second season, he finished eighth again. Mikel Arteta and they trusted him, and he had he had a lot of experienced players. That he and came this, to this, this, this is, is a, an, this a Chelsea. This is a Chelsea team that has experienced success continuously over the period. 
So it looks I as mean, if... Do you, realize, do you realize we, even as United fans, we use the same theory that he's using concerning Ateta. Ateta, you, Ateta is not the reference. Ten Hag. But, but, <laughs> it, it, no, you see, but that, it, you see, but that is an example of a team that, or, or a, you know, a group of a group of players that had been together for a while and a manager that was given time. I think genuinely with United, I can understand the pressure. United, look, let's not kid ourselves. That is literally the biggest football franchise in England, easily. And one of the biggest in the world. So when you go to Man United, the expectation is that you start winning. Yeah. So certainly the pressure is a little different. I think the expectations on a United manager and the expectations on an Arsenal manager are not the same. Arsenal have mm. that history and tendency to, to, to be patient for their manager. Otherwise, how did Arsene Wenger ever last 16 years? Because he stopped winning after 2004. You know, sure. but... He still stayed there for as long as he did because Arsenal fans always convince themselves there's a greater good and they always love to give managers, uh, you know, a bit of leeway. United don't do that because even with Sir Alex Ferguson there for all those 26 years, every year he won. He was always winning. And that's the thing with United. Even for Chelsea, they don't have that history from maybe 25, 30 years ago. But that is their recent history. The expectation is to win. Yeah. So uh -huh. you can understand the difference. And that's why a lot of the fans will not buy into United fans trying to look to the Arsenal example or Chelsea fans trying to look to the Arsenal example. But that is the reality, uh, especially more so for Chelsea than United. Because look, you spend one billion, but what are the players that you spend that money on? What is their pedigree? Mm. So you can have a conversation about whether or not the money was wisely spent. But the reality is what you have. Look at their quality. Look at their pedigree and ask yourself if these guys should be competing for a Premier League title. Mm -hmm. They're simply not good enough. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if you want, for me, like there are metrics that convince me that with time and a couple of good signings, Chelsea can get to the next level. That is me. Maybe some Chelsea fans don't buy it. I've seen enough because if this team is so poor and yet they've created the second most chances in the whole Premier League with the second most expected goals, certainly they're doing something right. Absolutely. Now, so for me, that's my message to Chelsea fans. And that's my opinion. That's my position. I, I don't care if you disagree, but I think that Mauricio Pochettino is doing something right. He's not doing everything right, but he's doing some things right. And I can see some positive signs in this team uh, about the future. And so for me, I would say give him time. Quick Regarding the, the game, game itself, yeah. there are two teams that that are polar opposites in the way they play. Chelsea create an awful lot. United do not. United are a smash and grab team. That's how they play the whole of this season. Chelsea will create a ton of chances and not convert. The game against Brentford, United faced, what, 31 shots. Yeah. United have faced yeah. the most shots of any team in the Premier League this season. I think the second most shots, I believe. So yeah. I saw some stats like that. Yeah. The United defense is so bad. It's so poor. You know, mm -hmm. and Chelsea just create numerous chances and yet can't score them. One thing I, I can guarantee though, and Chelsea can see from this smash and grab situation, Burnley didn't create anything. It's two chances they got, they scored. So I think this is why I see the game playing out. I think both teams will definitely score. That I think is going to happen. I think mm -hmm. Chelsea will find the back of the net. I think United will find the back of the net. And I think that it's going to be, it's going to come down to who would take their chances. And I genuinely feel that if Chelsea were to take their chances, they would create enough to be able to win this game. Even in the first leg, Chelsea were really poor. I think Chelsea didn't show up in that game. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, they, 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 they had absolutely no motivation whatsoever. They were so poor. United more than deserved to win. And United have this tendency to step up in big games when you don't really expect them to, spe uh, to step up. And they could be so poor against Brentford like they were last weekend, and they come up against Chelsea looking like prime Barcelona. They've got that in them, uh, uh, in, in, in this Ten Hag team. We saw them against Liverpool as well. Yeah. Uh, nobody gave them a chance. They stepped up and they looked like they were prime 1999, you know, Manchester United again. So United do have that in them. Going to Stamford Bridge with a ship on their shoulder, they will think that they have a point to prove. My heart tells me that United are going to get a result. My head is telling me that Chelsea will get the win. 
But deep, 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 deep down, I know that United are probably going to win this game. That's what I think. Well, Kwame, a quick one, like two minutes. Just wrap it up with the game and then we'll bring it to an end. Uh, the best way to describe Ericsson Hart's team this season is inconsistent. We were very poor against Brentford. Very, very poor. I don't expect us to be poor in the next game. We'll probably turn up against Chelsea and get a drubbing against Liverpool over the weekend. That's that. That would be typical of Manchester United this season. I think we'll show up. I think we'll turn up because the, the coach would give them a real role again. Like he would really turn to them for what they put up against. That was unacceptable. We was a, it was we, a nice we got goal. away with the draw. Yeah, we got away with the draw. Like I mean, it was. It was horrible. So I, I think we'll turn up and it's it's against a Chelsea team that hasn't done well against us over the past few years. I think we can get a result there. When I say result, I'm not too sure we'll win, but I just know we wouldn't lose. It's most likely going to end in a draw anyway. But then if any team is going to win, it's going to be us. And then we'll see what happens after that. Well, all right, guys. Thanks so much. I, I think that Chelsea will attack. And when Chelsea attacks, the gaps... At the back, that is where the problem will come for Chelsea. When, when Chelsea attacks us, will it be compact enough to stop them from scoring? They can't. They create and That's can't score, point. so that is the problem. Okay, when they create. Fair you know, point. <laughs> when they create and they don't score, some one ball to Rashford or Ganacho or and Hoyland, and then we are all over. The game is all over. The kings of touch and grab. <laughs> I had wanted us to touch on Mason Mount, but time won't allow us. But we'll be looking out for that. When we are doing the review, probably we'll touch on perhaps. Money shots. base! <laughs> <laughs> finally got off the mark. He finally got off the mark. <laughs> anyway, guys, so Money thank base. you so much, Forge. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. If this is your first time joining us and if you're watching and not subscribing, please remember, hit it. Hit the subscribe button. It's very important to you. we catch you on the next one. We come with a review Bobby. of United Chelsea. <laughs> and then we'll do a preview of United Liverpool. That's how we end today's edition. Have a great one. See you on the next one.